Visit Colorado these days and you can smell change in the air. It's the scent of legal marijuana for recreational use. If you're a resident, 21 or older, you can walk into a state-licensed store and buy up to an ounce of pot. Tourists are limited to a quarter ounce. Colorado has allowed medical marijuana since 2001, but in 2012, voters amended the state constitution to allow recreational pot and gave the government one year to make it work. Colorado's governor calls it the most ambitious social experiment of the 21st century. Three other states also have approved recreational pot, but none has gone further or faster into the legal retail weed business than Colorado. The experiment just hit the one-year mark, and we wanted to know how it's going. So we headed to Denver, the epicenter of a marijuana industry that's now in full bloom. Welcome to the Mile High City, where marijuana, long a symbol of the counterculture, now is just a part of everyday culture. It's a Thursday night in downtown Denver, and we were invited to a marijuana food and wine pairing catering to young professionals. You might expect to see the band toking up, but here, everybody is. The food is sprinkled with marijuana, the wine infused with a strain called Killer Queen. Bud tender Leo Deneve selected it for the evening. Because of the mellowness of the strain, there isn't any kind of anxiety attached to it. So that's why we have such a crowd of uh, happy and fantastic people. And what we're doing there with that machine is uh, it creates smoke that is cooled to minus 10 degrees. And that smoke is then blown into this glass. And that allows the wine to open up and really bring in the fruit forward qualities of it. Those who might remember pot from the 70s, the marijuana grown and sold in Colorado today is up to 10 times stronger. There's a healthy appetite for the Rocky Mountain High and no shortage of stores to supply the demand. There's the corner store in Denver. 173 even. A high-end boutique in Aspen, right around the corner from Prada and Gucci. Colorado has licensed more than 300 recreational dispensaries so far, bringing up an estimated $288 million in sales, $37 million in tax revenue. This is a lot of pot. This is industrial scale. It How many is. rooms like this do you have? Uh, when we're fully finished with our construction, we'll have 12 like this. Meg Sanders is a new breed of cannabis CEO, driven to push marijuana into the mainstream. A suburban mother of two, she left a private equity firm to run Mindful, a chain of four retail stores that sells recreational and medicinal pot. All of this is legal. That's just mind-blowing. It is. Meg, did you ever think you would be here doing this? No, never in a million years. I was working in a, in a small financial office and it just wasn't a lot of upward growth and what better opportunity than to jump into a fledgling industry, um, something that we'll never see again in our lifetime. Her 44,000 square foot marijuana factory is cutting edge. Automated water and nutrient systems feed the plants. Lighting mimics the seasons so plants can be harvested year round. All this in a warehouse right across the street from a Denver police station. 60 mindful employees cultivate, trim, and package up to 500 pounds of marijuana every month. This is not somebody's backyard. This is not some stoner's basement. This is a big business. This is industrial agriculture, absolutely. Commercial, commercial grow right here. Which is why she recruited Philip Haig, known in the trade as a master grower. He used to cultivate flowers on an industrial scale in Texas, but his true passion is pot. What do you bring to the table here? Um, efficiencies on the grow side. I treat this building more like a large-scale tomato greenhouse than your average cannabis grow. So. But these ain't tomatoes. These are definitely not tomatoes. Um, it's a very specialized plant. And you are personally familiar with your wares? Most definitely. <laughs> yes, sir. All of this still is illegal at the federal level. The Justice Department is watching closely. 
The feds say they won't intervene as long as Colorado's recreational pot doesn't fall into the hands of kids or criminals or cross state lines. With marijuana's growing acceptance in Colorado, Sanders says she's comfortable as a cannabis capitalist. I have a massive engineering feat for you. Her 23-year-old son Elijah works with her at Mindful. She says parents at her daughter's middle school seem more curious than critical of her business. Do you have any concerns that your job is sending the wrong signal to your 13-year-old daughter? I'm not concerned about that. At all? I'm not. Um, this, this isn't carte blanche, oh, because I work here, everybody should have access to it, and that includes her. We have very good conversations about it. She knows. She knows. I mean, you say you're a business person. I think some parents would look at this and say, she's just peddling drugs. I can tell you that the drug dealer, illegal drug dealer on the corner in any state in this nation isn't carding isn't checking your ID, isn't making sure you have a medical marijuana card or you're over 21. This industry does it every day. The stats show it. We've done a phenomenal job. Mindful expects to rake in $18 million this year, but it's not easy money. Colorado requires every plant grown by a licensed operator to be tracked from seed to sale. Each one has a barcoded radio frequency ID tag and is logged into a statewide database. Cameras watch it all. The goal is to keep every bud and bid off the black market. Greenwood Village Police Chief John Jackson isn't sold. Law enforcement is really trying to do the right thing here. It's different and it's requiring a mind change or shift on our part. Jackson is president of the Colorado Association of Chiefs of Police. He says there's still illegal pot on the streets from underground dealers who don't have to levy 28% in state taxes. There's a common belief that by legalizing it, you will get rid of the black market. Mm -hmm. I can resoundingly say that the black market is alive and doing well. It's still cheaper to buy it from the, the dealer on the street than to buy it in the store. Certainly. You know, we've created an entire industry here, and I'm going to be honest with you. There are some very responsible people that are involved. And it's like anything else in society. You've got a few people that are really making it hard for the others and maybe use Colorado as a platform to simply provide their marijuana to the rest of the country. This is what he's talking about. In October, Denver police and the DEA raided several warehouse operations that were allegedly growing marijuana destined for out of state. Neighbors Nebraska and Oklahoma are suing to have the U.S. Supreme Court declare Colorado's recreational pot market unconstitutional, claiming marijuana is crossing their borders. It's too early to say if other problems are taking root. Colorado is just now starting to collect and analyze data on pot's impact on the state. I do worry about if we are irreparably harming Colorado, and it's, it's something that will take years to, to suss out. This baby-faced 31-year-old, Andrew Friedman, is Colorado's marijuana czar. He's a Harvard law grad, hand-picked by Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper to oversee the rollout of legalized recreational pot. There is no roadmap. I mean, you guys are racing ahead at, you know, a thousand miles an hour, and you're trying to work this out on the fly. How do you do that? It's an unbelievable challenge. Within one year, we wanted to get our culture up to speed. And, uh, what is, in, what is uh, the right amount to imbibe or to smoke and drive? Uh, what's appropriate around kids? What's appropriate in public? Society had never weighed in on these things before. Okay, anything else on caregivers? Black market, gray market, where we're going on it. He regularly calls together the department heads of revenue, health, education, all the state agencies involved with marijuana, trying to balance the demands of the people with public safety and the law. It's legal here, mm -hmm. but outside of Colorado, it's still illegal. It's a federally illegal drug. Mm -hmm. How do you square those two? Uh, well, it is a round peg in a, a square hole. It takes everybody being creative in ways they haven't been creative before, and, and knowing that at any time the federal government could come and shut us down and tell us that what we're doing is illegal in their eyes. Mm. You still think that's possible? Sure. 
it's completely possible that in a few years, somebody comes around and says, a new president says, we are not okay with you doing this. They know they're under a microscope. That's why Colorado was quick to act when it bit into trouble with edibles, marijuana candies, cookies, and other infused foods. Just three months into legalization, a 19-year-old college student visiting Denver leapt to his death from a hotel balcony after eating a pot-laced cookie. The coroner's report noted marijuana intoxication as a significant contributing factor. I think one of the things we didn't see coming was that um, people were going to overdose on edibles. And we're not going to try to hide that problem. New rules and regulations came out faster than I think you ever see state government do something. New rules placed immediate limits on the amount of THC, marijuana's major psychoactive ingredient, allowed in edibles, and required new labeling detailing the potency of each serving. But the biggest cloud over the industry is banking. As long as the federal government continues to count pot proceeds as illegal drug money, most banks won't touch it. So Colorado's billion-dollar marijuana industry is conducted almost entirely in cash. That's why Meg Sanders keeps a two-ton safe. So your payroll was in cash? Payroll, taxes, rent, taxes licensing fees, um, Home Depot. Vendors, you name it, our electrician. All absolutely. in cash. Absolutely. From a public safety standpoint, it's definitely um, the number one issue that this industry faces. If you want to guarantee that a, a fledgling industry becomes corrupt and, and you know, becomes populated with gang activity, fake it all cash, right? That's as old as Al Capone, right? Cash creates corruption. Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper says a partial solution might be a new state-chartered cannabis credit union. He's urging the federal government to approve it. Still, despite the problems, Governor Hickenlooper says he's encouraged by the rollout of this green experiment Colorado voters wanted. In the beginning, you didn't think it was a good idea. No, I posted it. You know, and I posted it, I think even after the election, if I'd had a magic wand and I could wave the wand, I probably would have reversed it and, and, and had the initiative fail. But now I look at it and I'm, I'm not so sure I'd do that even if I had such a wand. I mean, I think we've made a lot of progress and, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think we might actually create a system that, that can work. All right, I will have an eighth of that. Sure. Meg Sanders says marijuana is good for business. It's pretty groovy, dude. Yeah. And good for Colorado. Are you seeing a marijuana effect on the economy here? Absolutely. You can't find an empty warehouse in the city of Denver, really. I mean, you just can't. And then think of the ripple effect. I mean, we, we affect a ton of businesses, security, marketing, um, you know, web hosting. You it, we're a business just like anybody else. We have the same needs. Today, you can walk into a mindful dispensary and buy a joint for $14.53. Business is good. Sanders is planning to expand. We're creating, we're saying, please trust us. We know what we can do this right. I do remember when this was rolled out, everyone thought that the sky was going to fall. Still there. <laughs> it didn't fall. And business is thriving, and the customers are still coming through the door. So clearly, if I'm looking at my business and I'm looking at those around me, the consumer is saying, yeah, this works. Meet Joel and Lisa Schneider of Bud and Breakfast at 60MinutesOvertime.com.